Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you how you can start controlling the scope of your scope dependencies in .NET. Everybody knows how scoped works in an API or a web application because it's focused on just the actual request when it comes in your API. But what happens when you have a custom microservice that's doing event processing or message processing? That might get a bit trickier and in this video I'm going to explain to you exactly how you can control that and make your own custom scope. I'm going to do a very quick recap of how transient scope and singleton dependencies work but if you're familiar with that already you can click on the chapter below to move forward to just the scoped bits. So first and foremost the built-in DI framework of .NET has three main lifetimes for the dependencies and that is singleton, transient and also scoped. Singleton and transit are pretty simple. Singleton means that there is a single instance of that type for the whole lifetime of the application. So once initialized, this won't be reinitialized again. The new constructor, for example here, will not be used. Transient, on the other hand, is the other end of the spectrum where every time this service is injected into somewhere, for example, Every time this custom logger is injected through the constructor in this customer service, the instance of this and this object are going to be initialized again and again and again. There are scenarios where you want that, but there are also scenarios where you don't want to have that. For example, for service bus or other databases, we might want to maintain a single open connection because it will speed up the process of calling that database. However, in other scenarios, you might want to have a transient because you don't only want a single instance across your whole application. Something might be um, request specific or independent of a request, or you might want to be sure that there's not going to be any um, thread threading issues for two things using the same thing. Uh, so thread safety might be a concern. Now, scoped is in the middle. If, for example, this service was scoped, then, well, in this specific scenario, my application would fail. And it will fail because this is a simple microservice that doesn't have any controller. It doesn't have any web or endpoint specific functionality. In an endpoint environment like a web API, REST API, an ASP Donor Call application, the scope of your service, the default scope, is the request. So the moment something comes in, it enters the scope and every service is resolved within that scope if it's marked as a scoped service. Now, what happens if you have something like this, where the only thing that you have is a background service that is consuming events and starts processing those events. In this scenario, there are messages from Azure Service Bus, so they're messages. Uh, they're being mapped based on a type to a handler and then we're activating that handler and we are calling the handle message async method. So what happens in that scenario where you don't actually have a scope and you want to create one? And in my mind, the scope for this specific situation would be that every handler that is resolved or every service in the handler that is resolved during the message handling um, should be scoped or within that scope. So for example, uh, let me mark this. Scope starts here and scope ends here. So anything resolved in here uh, for these message handlers should be in scope. By the way, uh, the way I'm doing this is I'm doing some um, initialization in a static directory uh, based on the types that I'm consuming. I have an example of how you can do this with reflection as well, but to keep it simple, um, I'm doing this manually. And then I'm just attaching a couple of hooks, have some very basic checks on whether this event should be consumed or not, and then I'm consuming it. Let me quickly start this application to show you how it looks. Um, I am using this application here called uh, Azure uh, Service Bus Explorer to quickly publish events. So my application is running, as you can see here. And if I press send message with a header value of message type customer created, the message was received successfully. And you can see that this is the controller uh, that handles 
the message. Now, there is something that I intentionally added here, and that is that I'm using the activator class in this dispatcher. You would normally not use that in .NET applications. And that's because if you use the activator, it would be very, very tricky to do your own uh, service discovery for the services you need to inject based on your own service provider. For example, here I've commented out this call, which is the call that actually adds the customer in the database. This is a mock service, so it doesn't actually add anything to the database. But if I uncomment that and I properly import this, it will now fail because my activator is not dealing with this dependency when it's activating it. .NET has this uh, class that you might be familiar with. If not, it's a revelation for you. It's the activator utilities class. And this class behaves similar to the activator, but it actually allows you to provide your own service provider. And by doing that, it will automatically resolve services that you are activating. Let me uh, make this a bit clearer. So if I ref um, re return this to its original state with the activator and I try to inject something in both of those things and I try to run my application, what you will see is that it will fail saying that it cannot actually activate it. Uh, I will have to publish a message for that to happen. Let me just do that. And as you can see, it failed saying that it doesn't actually know how to use a no parameterless uh, constructor to activate that. So what you want to do here is you want to use that activator utilities class and you change your activator to activator utilities. And then in the create instance, if I move this, you will see now that you can provide a service provider as the first item and this service provider uh, you might have seen here in the configure method you can actually um, have it here and use it um, as part of this method but something that you don't or that you might not know is that this is also automatically added in your di framework itself and you can in fact inject that now, before I move forward, I want to address something because it's very important. Um, as you can see, this is now uh, injected and I can actually use this here. There is um, not really a rumor, but people are saying that by injecting the service provider, you are using an anti-pattern called the service locator anti-pattern. This thing exists and it is a valid anti-pattern in my opinion. But this specific use case for me totally gets a pass because some things would be absolutely impossible to do without it. The power of using this in a very controlled way is not only an, a not an anti-pattern, it's actually a must in some scenarios. And if you overuse it and you try to resolve all the dependencies your application like that you will absolutely fail but now this in itself is not is not a dependency used to resolve things things directly it's actually used in a very controlled way required by the framework itself and now that i have this the service provider if i rerun this application and i try to publish a message again assuming this starts now great uh, as you can see now, my um, message has been successfully published and that's because my services have been successfully resolved through the service provider. Here's the kicker. As you can see, there's two IDs and that's because I created a, a custom logger service, which is not really a logger, it's not doing anything. But imagine this as a logger that would also need to correlate the actions that happen in a single event handling or request handling or message handling this would need to live throughout the whole lifetime of a message handling in this scenario this has two different ids because it's used by two different things it's used by the customer repository and it's also used by the customer service a setup that you might actually have as well but in a realistic scenario i would want this logger to actually be able to correlate the call from the service to the repository and to anything else within that scope. 
If I just go and change this to add scoped and I run this, I'm going to quickly do that and show you exactly what happens. That's an interesting uh, point. Um, the, the thing, I mean, I'm not going to spoil it for you, just run it and show you. It will actually fail and it will fail because it doesn't know where your scope is. Um, this wouldn't happen in a normal web API application because the scope is by default the request handling. But in this scenario, the application doesn't know what the scope is because there is no scope. And how can we create a custom scope? Well, it's actually very straightforward, but a lot of people don't know about this. The service provider itself is not supposed to be used directly here. Instead, you can create a custom scope um, service scope equals service provider dot create scope so you're making a scope for that provider and that's the scope and because the scope is actually uh, disposable you can use the using keyword and now instead of using the service provider directly you can use the service scope dot service provider and now you are within scope and to make to help you visualize this better, this is the only scenario where I usually, even if it's very clear, I, I always add the curly braces uh, around the using statement instead of just leaving it up to um, the reader uh, to do um, with their imagination because it can actually be tricky. If you add some code outside of it, um, you might break the scope or extend the scope beyond what you should have. So comments stay here. This is staying here. I'm not gonna convert it to using declaration. And now anything within those curly braces is within scope. And to prove that to you, I'm gonna keep them as scoped and I'm going to create a new message. And by publishing that message, I expect those IDs to be the same. And that's because they will be in scope. And as you can see, those IDs are insane, the same. And if I publish another message, you will see that they are the same again for that specific scope that we created. So this is how you can very easily create your own scope by using the service provider dot create scope method and the activator utilities class, which I think is a must know when you're dealing with .NET and complicated um, service resolution scenarios. And for things like this, where there is no default scope, you must create your own if you need one you might not need one and that's totally fine but if you need one this is how you can do this and you're totally fine to use the service provider to do it because there is no other more elegant way to do it this is the way and this is why this actually exists so fear not use this it's absolutely fine that's all i have for you for today thank you very much for watching special thanks to my github sponsors for making these videos possible if you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you liked this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.